Hi everyone, this is Chinninath. Um, I have been working as a build and release engineer for almost eight years and I have been working with MSP since uh, I have uh, been working. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, see like uh, what is MS build and wh why do we need it and what are the different things that we can do with MS build. And before going there, uh, let's see like first of all what is MS build. So MS build is nothing but an MS build Microsoft build platform which is used to build your application. So in order to build an application, you need something. So you need something that can convert your uh, uh, application code into an executable. So once you have an executable that can be delivered to the users or the end customers uh, who can use that uh, application. But in order to do that, first you need to build your application. So MS Build is nothing but a MS uh, Microsoft Build Platform which is used to build your application code into an executable. Okay, so um, how it came into picture and what was the need of MS Build? Uh, so when it was introduced and all other things that we are going to learn now. So before going there, uh, let me be clear like uh, what is an MS Build? Is an MS Build Platform, Microsoft Build Platform that is used to build your application code. And it is used to build uh, all your Microsoft.NET stack applications. Like uh, it supports uh, C++ native uh, uh, code build, and as well as it supports all the Microsoft uh, uh, stack, like uh, C# projects, VB projects, F# -shop, uh, F -shop projects, or uh, Cloud projects. So all these are supported by MS Build. So uh, let's see, like uh, what was there before MS Build. So uh, MS Build came into picture with .NET framework. So once once MS Build has created .NET, uh, Microsoft has created MS, uh, .NET framework, then uh, users starting started using .NET uh, framework in order to build the, uh, create their application code and everything. Uh, but there was one essential thing that was missing is like um, and build engine that could uh, perform some customizations. So Earlier there was vsdnv.exe which was used to develop, uh, build your code but there was no customization nothing and uh, in order to do that uh, uh, everyone was looking for some build engine that can that can be used to uh, modify the process of build okay so then um, NAND NANT which came into picture so NAND came into picture and uh, NAND was uh, uh, also an, uh, also used to build the .NET applications, and which was cloned from Java uh, build uh, engine that is ANT. So ANT was used to build Java applications, and uh, someone used it to build uh, .NET applications. So which they have uh, renamed it as NAND. So uh, NAND was also a free tool, and it was also a big success at that time because there was no other engine that would uh, do that uh, do that job. So it was a big success and uh, everyone embraced NAND and uh, everyone thought like NAND is going to be the uh, next big thing. So uh, <clears throat> .NET framework was introduced in the year of 2000. So .NET 1.0 was introduced in the year of 2000. Uh, and later on NAND was uh, introduced in the year of 2001. Until then devynv.exe was used uh, uh, in order to build your application. And then 2001, uh, uh, NAND came into picture and everyone used NAND. So um, there was NAND. So then uh, how come this MS build came into picture? So uh, once uh, Microsoft's, uh, Microsoft uh, released .NET Framework 2.0, then they also included a build engine that can uh, give the customization to the, uh, the power of customization of build process to the user, uh, for which they have created a uh, command line tool called as an msbuild.exe and msbuild.exe can be used in order to build your applications uh, give me a second yeah so with dotnet framework 2.0 <coughs> they have included a build engine so msbuild.exe was a command line tool uh, that was also introduced with dotnet framework 2.0 which was uh, which has come into picture from the year 2003 so uh, from 2000 to 2003 that was the master 2001 to 2003 NAND was a master, and uh, later when MS Build came into picture, <coughs> NAND was opened. And the reason behind that is <coughs> the reason behind that is because uh, MS Build is a Microsoft uh, 
provided application and we are building our applications using microsoft uh, stack of technologies dot me framework which is also in microsoft product so uh, it, it, it uh, everyone knew like uh, ms build is going to evolve by time and uh, it is going to support uh, so many other great features and uh, everyone abandoned nant and <clears throat> everyone got adopted to ms build so why was nant uh, abandoned uh, when a new build engine came into picture the reason behind it is that in order to write an uh, nant script you need to uh, create a new uh, in order to use nant you need to create a script called the nant script which will be used in order to uh, build your project so uh, you need to create a separate script and you need to maintain it separately and as well as you need to um, <coughs> have uh, people who are familiar with nant in order to just build the project uh, so uh, that was a uh, that was a pain and as well as the second thing is like it was not an easy task to integrate it into visual studio id so uh, it was uh, everyone was using visual studio in order to build uh, in order to create your applications and uh, there was no way that we can integrate that uh, uh, nant into visual studio id <coughs> so the ms build uh, easily integrated it into visual studio id because visual studio is also a microsoft product so uh, they easily integrated into visual studio and uh, it from there on <coughs> ms build was a great hit and uh, nobody ever looked back towards nand so ms build is a b platform to build uh, microsoft stack technologies in the same way we have uh, we had ant for java applications but even uh, it had some flaws and everything so the same thing that that what i have told you earlier like it had uh, flaws and uh, everyone um, moved towards other type of building engines like maven gradle and other things for java applications so <clears throat> ms build was shipped uh, as a separate application and as well as it was also integrated with the uh, .NET framework and later on it was also integrated with visual studio id so now the visual studio id also has uh, ms build so always the latest version of uh, visual studio always has the latest version of ms build so ms build also got evolved in order to support the different type of applications that are being uh, created by microsoft like .NET framework 3.05 4.5 and all other um, .NET frameworks it supported all other uh, frameworks that are coming out of uh, coming out from microsoft uh, uh, door and then um, then now now everyone uses ms build uh, i don't know a single company which is still using nant uh, because it's an outdated one and no one has uh, i have never seen any company using nant as of now so ms build is a build engine that is being currently used by almost all the companies who are using microsoft stack technologies so <clears throat> let's go uh, now we know like how the ms build got evolved and how it was integrated uh, into uh, as an a separate application and then how it was integrated into dotnet framework so from dotnet framework 2.2 onwards it was part of dotnet framework it was part of dotnet framework and from dotnet framework 3.0 3, .0, 3 uh, to till the uh, for microsoft dotnet, uh, dotnet framework 4.0 um, the application was shipped as a separate uh, ms build engine and as well as also uh, integrated into dotnet framework and from Visual Studio 2013 uh, 2010, uh, it is also integrated into uh, IDE. So what, you can you can use MS Build Engine from Visual Studio IDE as well. Now now it has come into a stage where <laughs> Visual Studio always depends on MS Build to build your applications. So even though you build it from Visual Studio, the back end is going to be always MS Build.ex. So MS Build.ex is the uh, tool that is going to perform your compilation and providing the output. Um, so uh, now we by now we know like how it got uh, evolved and what is the history of MSP. Then let's go ahead and see like why we need MSP. So MS build uh, MS build engine is um, a very sophisticated one. So where you can do so many other things other than your uh, just a build uh, build process let's say like i wanted to build something and at the same time i wanted to uh, copy it to a shared location and at the same time i wanted to send uh, a mail to a particular uh, group of members saying that 
the particular output is available at particular location. Let's say I wanted to do all these things. So MS Build has that capability where you can do your custom tasks. So you can perform your custom tasks while uh, doing the build or before doing the build. So you can do it before build or after build and you can do whatever you want like uh, before uh, starting you want to you want to verify the version and update the version of an xml that you can do and uh, while building <coughs> if there are any, any errors then you can capture those, those errors and you can send a mail to the users group of those errors and as well as you can uh, you can also uh, once the compilation build is completed then you can copy the output files to a separate location and then send a mail to the particular group saying that the output is now available for usage so these are the different things that are that can be done with ms build so ms build is mostly useful when you wanted to perform some custom actions so either you can use ms build uh, directly uh, uh, from visual studio id or you can call it through uh, command line tool which is also available with visual studio uh, visual studio and it is uh, stored at different location and from where you need to call uh, invoke msbuild.exe and pass the arguments that are required to build your project. So the basic uh, uh, requirement for that would be msbuild.exe and the name of the project or path of the project file. So this is going to just build your application. So let's go ahead and see like <coughs> um, how, we, how it looks for an uh, .NET Framework applications when I create a .NET Framework application, how the project file looks like. And then I'm going to show you how the um, MS Build script file looks like. Now I'm creating a .NET Framework Microsoft Windows application, uh, Windows application using the C Sharp. Okay, uh, so we don't need anything here. Uh, let me just go ahead and uh, uh, see what, what are the op uh, options that are available with the build. <coughs> As you can see, like build has uh, different things out of which one is build solution, rebuild solution, and clean solution. And uh, let's keep it uh, uh, simple for now. We'll just contain these three things. And uh, let's go ahead and see what the build does. So whenever you say build the solution, what it is going to do is it is going to compile your application code into an executable and places it to the output directory. So where are these output directories? So those are specified in your project file settings. So if you go to the properties of, uh, if you go to the project and then go to the properties. If you go to the project properties, there are different tabs and in which if you go to the build there you can specify within the advanced output path and everything here so you can specify where the output needs to be and how it needs to be uh, changed with the platform configuration and uh, platform so let's say like if i select release as you can see the output path automatically got changed to bin slash release and these are all defined by default at the same in the same way you can create your own configuration and you can create your own configuration and then uh, uh, provide these uh, you can you can give the output path the different output path and everything so there you have a capability of customizing it so this this everything the uh, the project file is just a uh, simple xml file and which has different uh, groups like property groups item groups and uh, uh, imports and other things. So uh, the MS build script also has got the similar type of. Uh, uh, it also got the similar type of uh, uh, schema, XML schema. So let's go ahead and see like how the uh, actual project file looks like. So in order to do that, you can go here and you can unload the project, and then you can go and edit MS build.cs project. So this is how your CS project file looks like. It's an XML file. Okay. So this is how the project file looks like. So the project file starts with uh, <coughs> project tool version, 
which is going to specify like which is the tool version that we are targeting this project to. The current tool version is 15.0, and then we have something called as an import that is to specify from where you need to get the properties file or from where uh, you need to get the uh, targets file and other things. And there is a, something called the property group uh, that is going to be a default property group because we haven't specified any configuration that we are going to explain in detail in the next videos. Uh, for now, there is something called the property group and there is also an, another property groups. So there are multiple property groups and then we have something called as an item group. Uh, so there are multiple item groups. One is to refer reference, another one is to specify the uh, uh, includes of inclusions of files and then we have something called an inclusion of files without compilation and uh, there is also something called an import in order to import the target so this is how the typical uh, msql script uh, the cs project file looks like so let's go ahead and see like uh, how the msql script file looks like Just give me a second. Okay, so this is what the typical um, MSP script looks like. So this is a uh, simple MSP script file. So there is something called as a property group. Let me change it to XML. So there is something called the property group and there is something called the item group. So there is something else called the targets. So these are the different things. But as you can see, like I haven't imported anything here because I have specified the targets here itself. So I have specified the target. So there was no need for me to import those um, targets or import those properties because properties are also defined here itself. And uh, you can either build it from Visual Studio like I said, you can build it from Visual Studio or you can build it from msbuild.exe. So basically, let's go ahead and see where that msbuild.exe is available. So Visual Studio also comes with msbuild.exe. So if you go to the msbuild Visual, uh, Visual Studio installation folder, that is C folder, so it's 56. Wait, so Visual Studio. <clears throat> Here we can see something called an msbuild.exe. So this is a command line application which we are going to use in order to build our applications. So this is located at the uh, installation location of my, uh, Microsoft Visual Studio 2017. And as I have already told you, like it also ships with .NET Framework. So let's go ahead and see like where this uh, .NET Framework is installed and see where it is. So let's go ahead. Okay, meantime, I will show you where this, uh, that is located under the uh, .NET framework. And uh, uh, as I was saying, like it can be built from Visual Studio ID or it can be built from uh, command prompt. So in order to use it through command prompt, you need to first go to the location where this msbuild.exe is located and then pass the project file uh, full name. Then, uh, then it is it, it will automatically build that particular uh, project with the default settings. So let's go ahead and try to build it from here first. So
let's go ahead and build it uh, from here first if you rebuild this solution it is going to clean everything and then it's going to rebuild i will explain later yeah okay now first let's try with what happens when we build it so if you build the solution it says zero succeeded zero failed and one up to date which means like it hasn't uh, uh, built anything so everything was up to date so there were no changes into the application code so it hasn't built anything so if there is a change into particular uh, application code then it is going to build it so let's go ahead and uh, make it a little more complicated by adding a new project and let's call it as an class library for dotnet framework and add it to this one and let's go ahead and add so i have modified it uh so now, now let's go ahead and say build solution so what it has done is we have add, we have added and changed only one like uh, one one project but the other project was uh, not uh, it was it hasn't changed anything so it it, it was same as uh, from the last build we haven't changed anything so what happened here is here one has got succeeded and zero failed and one up to date which means like it it was only able to build one uh, it will be only building only one project but whereas it is going to skip the other projects because they are already up to date. Okay, <clears throat> so that is the build uh, process. So how the build process works is, if there is any change to any particular code or project, then it is going to build the project. Otherwise, it is going to leave as it is. But if you go for something else called as a rebuild solution, let's go ahead and see what happens when we click on rebuild solution. So um irrespective of any changes to the project file whether it has changed or it hasn't changed irrespective of that it is going to rebuild all the applications and there is something else called a clean solution so if you wanted to uh, remove all the output directories remove all the symbol files link files pdb files so all those files if you want to remove it remove everything and again if you want to uh, build your application from the uh, from the starting as if uh, it, it has been built for the first time then what we can do is we can first clean the solution then build the solution and the same process will be uh, can be done using rebuild solution rebuild solution is going to do the same thing first it is going to clean everything and then it is going to build uh, build the project so let's go ahead and see once again how the rebuild solution works So now we are able to uh, build the projects even though nothing was changed. And in the same way, if we clean the solution and if we build the solution, even though nothing has been changed, it has still built two. Because the reason behind it is because we have cleaned, uh, we have cleaned the output paths and everything. So it is an, uh, uh, it is something like a new project which we are building for the first time. Okay. <clears throat> um, so yeah. So as I was speaking, like you can either build it from Visual Studio, or you can call it from you can call it from the uh, com uh, command line tool, msbuild.exe. So it is available at cvmicrosoft.net assembly slash back. That it is so let's go out there. Currently, we're uh, looking into GAC folder and let's go ahead and see it here. Here, we should be able to find something called the msbuild.exe. So, ms, uh, the frame, uh, I have multiple uh, .NET frameworks installed side by side. So, for uh, 4.0, it is located at uh, uh, the 4.0 folder. And if you go for 3.0, then it is also available. If you go to 3.0, yeah, sorry, I haven't installed 3.0, but it it always uh, shipped with everything. 
So from .NET Framework 2.0, it always shipped with .NET Framework. So let's go ahead and see. Go down to the system. Okay, now we know how to build it from this issue. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, build it from command prompt. And for that, either you can use Visual Studio command prompt, which is going to refer to msbuild.exe that is shipped with Visual Studio, that is the latest version of MSBuild. Or you can uh, you can also ship with uh, you can also you can also use uh, Windows command prompt. Uh, only thing is you need to uh, navigate to the path where it has been installed. Let's go ahead and uh, try it now with Visual Studio command prompt. You go to Visual Studio command prompt. So the command prompt. is located and go to this copy project by Google name and Now let's give it as MSBase is name of the project by path. So now we are able to build those. So we have zero warnings and zero error. So this is how you use MSB.exe. And uh, now let's recap like uh, what we uh, what we have learned and uh, what are the things that we uh, are able to answer now. The first one is what is MSB. So in simple words, MSB is an MS, uh, Microsoft build platform in order to build your uh, applications. And what uh, is of MS Build? As I said, you like MS Build was introduced from .NET Framework 2.0 from the year 2004. And before that, we uh, we have used uh, NAND in order to build the .NET Framework applications. And after that, it has got evolved so much, and uh, we know the entire evolution, uh, evol uh, how it has got evolved, and uh, how it was shipped earlier, and now how it is being uh, shaped. Um, and then. <coughs> Why do we need MS Build? So we need MS Build in order to do the custom tasks with the build process. So if you want to uh, do some custom uh, operations during the process, during the build or after the build or before the build, then you can do it using uh, MS Build scripts. And uh, when do we use uh, MS Build? We use those MS Build if you uh, uh, if you want to perform any of these custom actions. So uh, these are the different topics that we have covered. And uh, uh, we are going to meet later to discuss on different topics on MSP. Thank you, everyone. Bye.